why pay more for your precious metals from the big guys with offices on Wall Street and who bank with J.P. Morgan? Get your fizz from the doc at sdbullion.com. This is the doc with the SD Weekly Metals and Markets Wrap. Uh, filling in for Eric this week is a special guest and friend of the show, Harvey Oregon. Uh, thanks for joining us again, Harvey. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Well, we have quite uh, some explosive action in the precious metals over the last week. Um, after the big sell-off, the second half of last week, particularly on Friday, breaking through under 18, uh, we've seen a continuation this week, Harvey. The silver tried to uh, spike back above 18 on Tuesday, I believe it was, spike right up to 18, uh, but then uh, sold off throughout the afternoon and evening session. The same thing on Wednesday. Uh, we're co- recording this uh, a day early today on Thursday afternoon, and you can really see the, the algo patterns uh, are in force and really just a mirror image uh, on the charts and the 72 hour charts uh, with each day uh, continuing uh, to be sold off a little more. We're trading right around 1750 right now as we record in silver. Gold has held above 1200. Um, had a big little bit of a move up earlier today and is trading right around 1225. To get started here, Harvey, uh, I'd like to get your take on the most recent uh, smash down in the metals. Well, first of all, the key to all of this is the bankers are uh, very adamant to try to keep silver uh, low because of their um, massive shortfall. Uh, the The open interest in silver is dramatically high, and even today is 168,347 contracts standing. Uh, and that's relatively, that's extremely high considering an extremely low price of silver. Uh, has this ever happened before? No, nope. first time ever. Uh, gold has a low open interest, but also has a low gold price. So something is going on in the silver to keep this open interest high. And it is my supposition, and uh, uh, Bill Holter, and now quite a few others are kind of agreeing with me. He says that the United States well, let, let me start from the beginning. In 1990, the United States had about 2 billion ounces of above-ground silver to their credit. And it was uh, that was built from the Manhattan Project, which the silver wasn't used, and it was stored for many years. The United States used that silver, and in the year 2003, the United States announced to the world that they were out of silver. So somehow they needed a an above-ground stash to, to continue their suppression scheme. See, you cannot suppress gold unless you have an above-ground silver. And the only known supply other than the SLV would have been, of course, the, the, the Chinese government. And at this time period, uh, China needed, wanted to have most favored nation status. The United States probably gave it to them in return for a lease of about 10 years, which would be the logical agreement that would be given to the United States. Uh, so at, if this would have been, let's say, in the mid of 2003, then probably mid-2013 or the end of 2013, that 10-year lease would have been up. You know, then China would probably demand its silver back. The United States would say, well, wait a second, we don't have it. China is one country you don't do those things. They get very angry, which uh, and you're seeing this manifesting itself in how they're um, using their muscle uh, which is really the, the Russia joining at its hip. So the two of them are together are, are really one force to be reckoned with. And it's probably because China wants its metal back. China is probably through proxies owning the, uh, the dominant part of the open interest at silver. And that's why they refuse to budge. They will not lower. Their, normally, the exercise is to whack. The open interest falls dramatically, and the bankers cover. Um, but in this last year and a half, they couldn't do this, which will explain every day we're seeing constant whacking. And it's uh, it's not really the gold that's bothering them; it's the silver because the Chinese can at any time take delivery of the last ounce of comics 
and bankrupt that facility. And a failure to deliver in the comics is the same thing as a, as a bank failure or a bank run. It's identical. So uh, that is basically what is going on. Um, the bankers are, are paranoid to try to get that open interest down um, because they realize that at any given time, uh, the Chinese can demand silver. Now, I also want to point out to you that I'm watching Shanghai, the silver market over in China. A year ago, Shanghai um, had 44 million ounces in its vault, and it has been t declining steadily up until last week, last Monday, when it's down to 2.8 million ounces. And I expect it'll be down on this Monday coming to about roughly, maybe a little under 2 million. I expect by the mid-December, all of that silver will be gone. And there is, I can uh, just imagine that China will then seek out its metal. There are only two places I know of that above ground silver that they can probably get, and that's the SLV, and I'll talk about that in a second, and this, the last part is the comics. Uh, you will note over the last year and a half, the GLD gold has been declining rapidly. Okay, we it's been gone down quite a large percentage. We were up to uh, uh, 1,330 tons, and now down to 780 or something. It is interesting that the silver SLV inventory has gone up, and the reason that is is because there's no problem with real silver there at all. I think you just have nothing but paper silver, and that's why they're adding to it because there's no real silver and the bankers know it so that the participants don't tender in any of their shares to get silver because there isn't any. Which will then tell me that when this game ends, our friends the Chinese will not go to the SLV because there isn't any silver there. They will go to the last bastion of known whatever silver is they do have and they will take delivery and that should bankrupt the system and that's when this thing will end. So that's my take on it. I think I'm right. Um, but uh, that's my theory. And there's quite a few people now who are agreeing with me. So you're looking for uh, the Chinese to uh, attack the COMEX for physical once Shanghai is completely drained then? Oh, yeah. Well, you can imagine how much... I mean, the Chinese have massive business. They make the silver screens, the, the, the photo, you know, the um, imaging... Uh, the coins, they, they, they do a lot of stuff. They're demanders. Uh, they, they, they're, they're, the mines over in China are about 117 million ounces. And their demand, I think, is double that. Uh, which means from making the silver panels and radio, all the radiological stuff, pharmaceutical, whatever they're making, um, they're going to draw on somebody's silver. Okay? They're not... Uh, okay? Well, let's put it this way. They're, they're utilizing... 44, 44 million ounces down to two. So let's say 42 million ounces per year over and above what they produce. Okay, that's, they're going to grab that somewhere. And I don't think that London, London has been a wonderful supplier of gold. And that's the Bank of England. So the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York are the wonderful suppliers of gold uh, to China. Uh, silver, there is no uh silver at the federal reserve bank in new york and i don't and i'm pretty sure there's no silver at the sov i think that's been used up already buffett's 137 million ounces of silver has already been used and they're sitting with nothing but paper so uh, that's when i think the attack will occur and that's why i'm watching shanghai like a hawk and no, they, okay, go ahead no this comes right on the heels also of this week's revealing of Everyone who uh, knows the story, uh, this dates back to about a year and a half ago of the CFTC's uh, investigation of two J.P. Morgan whistleblowers who coordinated with Andrew McGuire. Um, and the story has come out just this week here uh, yesterday that after the CFTC abruptly closed their investigation last September, I think it was a day or two after a meeting with Andrew McGuire and realizing that they were in trouble, that uh, Andrew McGuire and his legal team approached big-time New York financial journalist 
with the name of Cohan, who wrote a, apparently a scathing article after looking over all of the, the evidence on the, the silver manipulation, and it would have been likely a blockbuster story on the, the magnitude of the LIBOR scandal about a year and a half ago uh, when that broke. He's, a, a, again, a, a renowned and widely published financial journalist, and he uh, wrote the scathing article, and it was then sat on by, I think, four or five um, major news news publications that typically publish his work. So, well, that's not really too surprising to me. It looks like Andrew McGuire is considering uh, putting all of the information he has into the public realm. Um, so it's kind of interesting just the, the timing there, don't you think, Harvey? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, Andrew was around my time. Uh, when, uh, when I testified in Washington, that's um, when myself, Bill Murphy, and then um, it was that day that I found out, and we talked with Andrew, uh, what was going on in both silver and gold. And uh, it, it was amazing how they tried to, you know, uh, shut Murphy up, <laughs> and, you know. And then they, um, they trying to get information, like, like they were trying to uh, enclose information for, uh, that uh, Andrew could not get it out. And this poor guy, and, and his, his, his data is superb. I'm just telling you. I mean, and you can just see it. What, what happened is, is they freeze. They just don't, will not let any of this get out. Uh, the, the key thing in this document, let me tell you what's, what's important with the document, is that the author, William Cohan, Cohan C-O-H-A-N, uh, basically states there's collusion. Criminal, he calls it criminal collusion by the, uh, by uh, CFTC officials. In other words, they knew what was going on, and they basically suppressed and and they wanted to keep the suppression game alive. Okay, and that's base, and that's why none of this can get out. And it kind of, you look at it, and it kind of says it kind of blends into the idea of why they're doing this. Is if mainly China is the long, which is illegal. It's collusive in itself that they're cornering the market, which is totally against commodity law. That they are cornering and yet the CFTC officials allow this and the reason of course they allow this is because they made the deal and they want their silver back and can't get it so it's becoming a criminal um, conspiracy in both ways in everything and that's probably why and of course Eric Holder just resigns today uh, you have all five commissioners gone that were there with me so in five years uh, or four, in four years all five have disappeared you know, um, it kind of says that there's a lot of uh, criminal activity to the highest degree. How's that happening, especially on the silver front? And what's, okay. in, and what's interesting is in that note, uh, supposedly, uh, Bart Chilton, after he was resigned, has admitted that he, he thinks uh, some sort of a cover-up happened at his own, invest his own uh, organization with the CFTC. Well, he said that to me quite often as well. Okay, I mean, he, he's, he was only one man out of five. When people ask me, you know, is he real? And I said, oh, he's a, he's a good man. He really is. But I, I think he was caught with the other four, and he realized what was going on there, and he just basically was frozen. He, he, he tried his best, okay? Um, and I, do I really think he knows? Yes, I really do. I think he knows that there's a lot of criminal activity in there. I'm just telling you by some even the data. I mean, when I see uh, when I see a, a physical inventory of points of X ounces, point zero zero zero, which is really unheard of, uh, and they it comes in quite often. I said, "What the heck's going on?" And when I mentioned that to Bart, he said he's going to get an answer. And when finally the answer was going to come to me, he says, it's "Too confidential. I can't tell you." And I was blew up. But anyway. That, that kind of tells you what goes on at the CFTC. Uh, I, I think the data is, is compromised at best, probably phony. And the bankers get to put whatever figures they want because the CFTC officials won't look at it. So, Harvey, with all of that in mind here, I, I know you're looking for a potential 
uh, run in the COMEX in December then. Um, if the Shanghai drawdown continues here and the Shanghai is out of silver in the next uh, three or four months. What's your outlook in the short term here for the metals? Is the pain over? Is uh, silver going to test uh, support at 16 again? Uh, what's your take in the short term? I think the, the, the whacking will continue until the, until the last ounce of gold or silver is handed in and that's the end. These guys are criminals to the highest degree and don't care. So they have to keep the price low uh, because of their massive short, their, their short positions are now in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, and so they'll have to continue because they'll have to keep giving huge collateral. So I don't see much price rise in the next two months until this until the comics blows up. I'm sorry to tell you that, but I think I'm right on this. I said this four months ago, and I'm saying it now. I cannot see it possibly rising. Uh, they are now um, uh, raiding the comics at will every day, bar none, because nobody is watching and nobody cares. So if you're an investor listening to us here, Harvey, um, would your advice be to wait uh, and let the, the whackings continue and uh, price point to drop further, or would you take advantage of physical here now with gold around uh, 12 and a quarter and silver under 18? I never stop. So you keep buying, uh, but I always tell people, please do not play the comics. Don't just take the metal, take it off, stack it and put it away, because you'll never in a million years get it cheaper. Okay, and as a matter of fact, silver has never, on a present value basis over the last, uh, what, five, six hundred years, has never been cheaper as it is today. <laughs> you can look at it, and that's, that's basically it. I, would, I wouldn't even bother. Just consider it a bonus. But you can't, you know, anybody who tries to play leverage with these turkeys uh, at the comics, you know, you're, 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 you're risking it. Uh, I wouldn't. I'm just telling people it's, it's not worth the, the gamble. You're just the best thing you can possibly do. Those that want to buy gold, you just buy an ounce, two ounces, and put it away, and then keep keep taking your excess money, and you'll be amazed later to see what that'll buy. But don't try to bottom pick it; it doesn't pay. And it's kind of um, references what Jim Sinclair's always uh, advised, at least for the last ten or fifteen years, is don't buy gold or silver on margin. Never, please don't. Because this is how these guys rip you apart. This is, you know, they, they know it. That's how they raid. They, they, they can see how much uh, positioned you are, and, and they whack uh, uh, at the opening, which is what I guess they did today uh, on the silver. They just saw and ripped through all the lungs, all the guys that had uh, stop positions. And they, and they right can see where your max pain is and where your stop it. positions are. Yeah, they look at They're criminals. And we tell them, I told that to the CFTC, it's not, and, and, you know, and, and it's going on deaf ears. So if, if you're seeing such criminal activity, just, okay, uh, you're dealing with it, but just go out and buy, and go, you know, go to your local bank or anybody, a dealer who has gold and silver, just buy it and put it away and, you know, don't, don't put it in the, in, in the bank safe deposit box. Keep it, keep it elsewhere, <laughs> just in case they, they rob you, but... Um, now, what about uh, the gold-silver ratio here, Harvey? Um, it's not quite as extended as we saw back in 2008. I want to say it topped at about 82 or 83 to 1 back then, but we're, in, um, we're getting close to that here now. Um, what's your take right now of uh, the relative values of gold versus silver? Silver has never been cheaper on, on a, on a go-forward basis. So I, I would think that the ratio has reached its, its bottom. Uh, it, it, like the, you got to go buy silver. I, I think it's going to reverse itself, where silver will rise a little faster than gold. But my, my take in, in in today's dollars, I expect gold to be, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars, and silver about two hundred dollars an ounce. And uh, we're not giving any advice or recommendations here, but. That is one way um, stackers and precious metals investors can increase the amount of ounces over time without having any fiat currency or dollar exposure is uh, to play those gold-silver ratios because uh, they do rise and fall. Um, I think back in, um, what, a year or two ago, it peaked uh, in a 30-to-1 ratio. So 
you know, that's when silver drove all the way to 49. Uh, that's when the fun began with the, with, with the April drive-by shooting uh, and started the mess. Probably that's when, if you, that was near, was 2011, wasn't it? That started, oh, no, 2013. Yeah, that's probably when, when China demanded their, their silver back. And probably the, um, the West didn't know how to act upon it, so they started whacking like crazy, trying to loosen as much silver and, as, as they can to try to pay back the Chinese, but that to no avail. I want to get your before we wrap up the show here, Harvey. I want to get your take on one other story. Um, as uh, we all know, um, back in 2011, in a move that probably contributed majorly to gold's move to all-time nominal price highs in the fall of 2011, uh, was Venezuela and Hugo Chavez's repatriation uh, um, request, where they rather rapidly pulled in over 100 tons of their gold, um, yes. which is sat in. Uh, I think an underground vault in Caracas for the last three years. But um, there was a, a report that was quickly kind of buried after uh, Venezuela denied it towards the end of last year that Goldman Sachs and a couple of uh, the investment banks were working with Venezuela for new lease swaps uh, to get some of that gold back. And it, it sounded like at the time that it was some of the gold that was still held in Paris. No. But, th- but there's been uh, some new recent developments and reports that it looks like the bankers are trying to get um, Venezuela's gold back. Um, okay, I'll, can I answer that? What I'm, I'm pretty sure what's going on there. There's still about 50 tons of gold left at the, at the, um, the Bank of England. And that is the gold that Venezuela will use. They will not touch any of the gold. They have a, something like 377 tons or 367 uh, of which only 51 tons is left at the uh, Bank of England, and that gold is gone. So Bank Goldman Sachs will try to do some deal to try to eliminate the, the the chance that Venezuela will ask for that gold to coming back, and will probably take its debt and uh, Venezuela's debt and turn it into paper money and pay off their debts and things, which is silly, but that's what they're going to do. Um, so Venezuela is now hyperinflating. They're being joined by Argentina. They're going to be soon joined by the Ukraine. And the Do you West. think the bankers will make a grab for that gold that actually has made it back to Venezuela? Maduro is a stupid man, uh, but I doubt very much if he will give up his jewels. I, I, I would be shocked. The only gold that I think he will use to do some deals would be the 51 tons at the, at the Bank of England, which is already gone. I don't think that they would. In the same way that Argentina, look, Cristina Fernandez uh, is in a lot of trouble in Argentina, and it's got 61 tons, and it's not giving up any of its gold, no matter what. It had 55 tons. Instead of, instead of uh, um, buying or paying off debt, it went and bought six more tons, even though they're in trouble. So they're up to 61 tons. They're not going to give it up in the same way. But I, I, I think the Ukraine did. I think the, the West came in and took the Ukrainian gold, which was about 33 tons. And I think that's uh, that did happen. I think the West stole it. Uh, and I think that's how the gold is being supplied to China now. I mean, 41 tons of gold is moving every week. And I don't think very much is coming from the GLD, which means you only got one supply left, and that's the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. And that gold doesn't belong to the, to the United States. It belongs to foreign gold, and the United States don't care. They're selling it, and that gold is disappearing. Um, Steve D'Angelo is working on that one. He's trying to get – I'm tr- we're trying to get some export data to see exactly what the United States are getting. Uh, a couple of months ago, the United States had four billion dollars worth of gold exports, which is fascinating in itself because the United States uses all its gold internally in its country to either make coins or jewelry. So, what on earth would they be exporting four billion dollars worth of gold? Which I really believe that's their way of exporting someone else's gold. And they have a strange way of reporting it. Um, but that's what that's what I think is going on there with the Venezuela situation. I doubt very much if Maduro used any of his 300 and 
13 tons, I think. So that's, that's in Caracas. That goal will stay there in situ, and I doubt very much we'll ever leave. They'll wait for a revaluation, and they can somehow, on a revaluation, get rid of their debts. He's not that stupid. All right, let's hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, Harvey's uh, predicting that the whacking will continue until the last ounce of gold and silver are gone. But I guess uh, the good news, the physical is rapidly um, leaving the Shanghai vaults again. Down another 14, I think it was, um, let me look here, 14 metric tons in September. Uh, Shanghai silver stocks and now down an astonishing 93% from their highs last year. So just uh, a year ago, down 93% to a new low of looks like 81 metric tons remaining out of uh, the original 575. So uh, Shanghai rapidly losing its silver and Harvey's looking uh, or uh, predicting that the bullion banks will attack the COMEX for physical once uh, the Shanghai is exhausted of inventory. That is correct. All right, so uh, I think we'll wrap up this week's show there. Thanks for tuning in. And Harvey, uh, once again, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. All the best to you. Always great to have you and your insight uh, on the metals markets and your exp expertise. So for the Doc and Harvey Organ, thanks for tuning in to this week's SD Weekly Metals and Markets. Those individuals who are in charge of monetary policy around the world, I think they're very much aware of what is coming. When I've asked Federal Reserve Chairman in the committee about this, they never said, no, that's not going to happen. They use the word orderly. As long as it's orderly, it seems to be okay.